Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 521. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the wonderful Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professionalized wrestling. I'm back, baby! No more of that remote stuff. I'm here in the studio, and we got uh, people from all over um, the East Coast this year, this week. Um, so, yeah. Uh, first of all, with us from Greater Pittsburgh, he is the Riz. He's off camera. There he is. He's back. There I am. Namaste. Hyped, Sorg. <laughs> That's for the gold this week. I don't, I don't get hyped. I namaste hyped. Yep. And also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, he is bad Mike just falling apart. <laughs> Welcome to the wrestling namaste him show. <laughs> <laughs> and also from California, <laughs> PA, The Wheels. Hey, what's up, folks? I am back from two week, two weekends of weddings Ooh. and wrestling yeah and the wedding's in a wrestling ring i'm looking forward to edit that getting that captured up here uh so we can work on that very very soon uh and of course you know, so wheels of sword. the renegade wrestling alliance mad mike former a wwe employee and riz he plays video games riz plays games uh together to talk pro wrestling games. with you uh but this is your wrestling mayhem show check us out wrestling mayhem show.com subscribe to us on itunes stitcher spreaker google play iHeartRadio, all the places facebook youtube facebook live we're doing as well drop us a line at 412-206-wmm0 good times at wrestling mayhem show.com at wrestling mayhem show.com and of course uh let's see on the sh- on the the dot com sorry i have a headache and everything's wonky right now um but <laughs> uh, uh you know go check out that check out the indie mayhem show check out all the wrap-ups and the midweek wars and everything going on and um and and while you're at it please check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our friendly matthew and jennifer carden's uh, Gar- carlin's uh wow. foundation for podcast betterment um our friends uh, the wrestling revolution bo diggity Woo! Woo! Alex Cars and Ed Burke on there supporting the show, and uh, let's get into the show. Um, yeah. Extreme, we got Extreme this past weekend. I finished watching Extreme Rules in an airport terminal yesterday. Uh, in um, first of all, uh, I guess the big news we should talk about our our I, the the savior. Of of WWE is back, Seth Rollins, Enzo Amore, Enzo Amore as well. <laughs> a lot of returns actually going on now, isn't there? Mm-hmm. John so, Cena next week. John Cena next week. It is the time. It is the time. Although I noticed Enzo did not wrestle last night. Yes, no, it's it probably going to be a while before he were actually. Yeah, I don't blame him though. I mean, I'd rather be more careful than jumping right back in. Right, right, but but still good to see. Like at least he must be good enough at least to travel, um, and that he if he even just comes out and and he he's the mouthpiece for for Cass in the meantime, I think that's fine. That's what I'm saying. I'd love Cass yeah. to be given a money in the bank qualifier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, have they established how many qualifiers there's going to be? Because I was actually talking with somebody on our Facebook page, uh, saying, you know, oh, I hope they keep a spot open for for a Finn Balor or something like that. I was like, you know, really, they could add whoever and how many they want because there hasn't been really a lot established in this, right? Supposedly, there's only going to be two more. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah, I, all I saw was like the graphic; it showed just two more spots open. Okay. Yeah, Alex Riley and question mark. Oh. Uh... No, because 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 yeah, Maven. Maven. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, uh, but that was that was interesting. Um, uh, but Seth Rollins came back. I think is CrossFit Jesus. CrossFit Jesus has returned, and I think is going to very much liven up the show. Oh, he, he already did. Mm-hmm. Did uh, you see? I mean, did you hear that pop last night for him on Raw? I mean, but face if you wanted to but i loved how he did it he played it up he played it up and and the only the best the only thing that topped that 
was how he molded that into a heel promo. Yes. And he got everybody to hate him simultaneously. Like he got he, like, just the line of, I threw your stuff in a garbage can and lit it on fire. That got everybody's that got everybody insane last night. Mm-hmm. And it, it made Seth Rollins' return even bigger, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. And, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry, I have some issues tonight. Um, but uh, no, you're right. You're right. And, and I'm looking for that, even though you know, we are getting kind of Seth and, and, and Rowan once again. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but let's track back to that Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Uh, again, I was kind of watching it a little bit of piece piece by piece uh, uh, throughout my weekend here uh, as I was, I was coming back. And uh, it, it seemed like it was a lot of fun. It, it, you know, I, I uh, the women's match I thought was a little shorter and less submission-y than, than I had hoped. Uh, but between the Fatal 4-Way, I thought the main event was amazing. Or, or the, or, or, or really good, really good with, with everything going on. Um, I, and I think it really kind of wrapped things up pretty okay. Um, but uh, uh, all I got, I thought it was a pretty good show. Yeah, I thought the show as a whole was pretty good. Actually, the one thing, the one match I didn't really dig that much was the New Day and the Vaude Villain, surprisingly. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, I mean, I, I it was it was perfectly fine, but I don't know. It just, I think it's a different attitude when it's Xavier in there and not Kofi. Yes. Okay. It was, kind of, it was kind of weird yeah. that weird that Kofi did or Xavier was one of the guys that was in there. Uh because normally it is Big Eve and Co- and Kofi, but uh I think he did fairly well uh to hold his he held his own in that ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, like you said it, it felt different. It felt really different. Well, well, I think what it is is I think they want to start trying to use him a little bit more than Kofi because he doesn't really get that much action. He's more of that trumpeter and everything like numbers. that. Yeah. Maybe Kofi was under the weather. That's true. You know, Potentially. It is kind of nice. Maybe. You know, you get in a yeah, warm- maybe, maybe he thought he was just – he was at West uh, Jamaican man again. I mean, he, he really didn't get uh, – properly set back when they went in time machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, technically they were back in the bygone era and then the time machine was destroyed. So unless they found doc Brown, they should still be back there. They found the ball. Yeah. That's for sure. Let, let's face it. Uh, Big E was right. Big E was right. <laughs> no, don't you it, do it, Rick. It, it, it wasn't a real time machine guys. Big E's right. It was a real time machine. Riz. I, I heard Kofi go back to that Jamaican accent. That you can't fake that. That's you a time can't machine. You can't, that. you can't teach you that. That is correct. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I'm watching the Fatal Four Way mm-hmm. in my hotel room, and and I'm, I'm Mike. You remember? I, I I know I keep going back to this, but you remember the four way we had back in the day at Ring of Honor. When what? when I saw my first oh that's all right. no wait, that, wait, 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 damn wait. it you no and then Mike had a four way at Re- <laughs> the Ring of Honor yes we did <laughs> back in 2007 <laughs> with, which involves with Cesaro Nigel McGinnis and Brian Danielson yes, oh yeah um <laughs> like it felt like we got a Ring of Honor match in that and yeah. surprisingly Miz was a big part of it he was he was I I, I know like you guys were talking about last week on the show about how like the Miz like is the Miz going to bring this down right and I thought he played the perfect part with this being the opportunist and even he he hung with them so I I, mm-hmm. I hope this dismisses any doubts on the Miz I don't think there's a Miz problem I don't who's doubting the Miz there there was yeah. a bit last week there was a bit last week but you know you know the thing is and I've always said this the Miz them. if they give the Miz something competent to do. Mm-hmm. Where he has a direction, character motivation, and it's good. He is one of the best people they have. Right. If he's just doing random Miz TVs and having one-off feuds, he is the shits. Mm-hmm. But he he needs to he needs to be motivated. He needs to have a proper storyline. I mean, 
he's a reality show guy, you know, like Mm -hmm. he knows how to sell a story with everything Mm -hmm. that he has to do. But if he doesn't have a story to sell, he's not he's not like your prototypical, really good indie wrestler. Like he's not going to be that guy. Right. Right. He needs something to stick his teeth into. And I think that's what we're kind of seeing with this exodus is there's a lot of people that just have super talented people in these holding platter patterns and and they're and we'll, we'll talk about that a little here in a little bit but uh but now that miz has like great people to work with um i i think it's it you know hopefully that means we'll see him in the mix even more and more with these new people as 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 we have this going on and, and one of the things uh the miz has that's going for him is his wife Oh, like absolutely. Mar- Maurice, absolutely. Maurice coming into this picture made him even better. Mm-hmm. Like, like what Mad Mike said about the character direction or character motivation. His motivation was Maurice mm-hmm. and is Maurice. Mm-hmm. So having her by, him, by his side makes him 10 times even better than it was. And he, he's a big, he was a, it was good without her, but this put her put him up to another level. Like Certainly. anytime Miz redoes a promo in a different style or does another take of it <laughs> so during great. his promos, it's my favorite. I, it it makes me pop every single time. So so every the- single time because it's so perfect. Because one of the things we always say about wrestling, and you always hear about like wrestlers who go on to be actors, is wrestlers only get one take at stuff. And that's how, you know, that's why they're, most of them are pretty decent actors. But I love that Miz is subverting that. Have we gotten <laughs> to a point where he's done a retake in the ring? Oh, no, but they should totally like, do Like, if that. he's doing, like, a jobber match or something, like, like he should completely do that, you know? Like, like, like I, I almost like wish... Like something they did with Miz, Miz, Miz now. Yeah, 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 yeah kind yeah, of, which was another angle double. on it. Uh, yeah. So, Garza's in the chat room uh, disagreeing with us. As he does. Uh, uh, Garza, hashtag heel Garza. The wrestling hashtag heel Garza. Hashtag heel Garza uh, WrestlingRevolution.com and uh, Patreoner of of the of the ages. Um, uh, Miz still sucks. A three way would have been much better. Miz only brings the build up. Uh, <laughs> I will. No, because, yeah, like if if it was just a three way with those guys, there'd be no booze. No. Not even, not even for Kevin Owens, who's definitely a heel. Right. But, like, that's the point. Like, if it was this a three-way, it would have been a Ring of Honor mid-card match. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this one, actually, you know, there's a story. Like, yes. his winning makes it so much better because Sami Zayn had that win. Kevin Owens pulls him out. Miz steals the victory. Like, that was yeah. perfect. That was absolutely perfect. That's where everyone needed to be in that circumstance. Right. That's where everyone needed to be because it doesn't make Cesaro look weak because Cesaro was technically beat by Sami Zayn. It's just mm-hmm. Miz got the pin. Mm-hmm. Like it was perfect. It was. It was. Uh, it, it was yeah. a lot of fun, and hopefully that brings it up. I, even like listening to Michael Cole lose his mind and and thinking that it may not actually be a play up on his part. Um, like <laughs> like 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 genuinely hearing uh, the, the announcers react. Cause I actually listened to the announcers this time. You mean, you mean genuinely, genuinely hearing sounds of joy coming from that dance table <laughs> and not yes. like really weird jokes directed toward Byron Saxton. Yes. And yes. Yes. By the way, <laughs> by the way, I feel for Byron Saxton. It is kind of fun how they pick on them and they, they're getting kind of inventive and fun with that. Um, but, but Byron, uh, uh, Byron is now, I'm in the Byron court uh, because uh, Michelangelo is also his favorite turtle as well. So I'm, I'm just, just want to give a shout out there to, to Michelangelo. Yeah, I, or else. By the way, I love that. Like my two favorite things are coming together at, at that pay-per-view <laughs> in pro wrestling. Again. Again, again, again in pro wrestling sponsored by ninja turtles like that's just like that's like 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 two cornerstones of my world uh yeah, coming together story. and it you feels so good superheroes you have superheroes in wrestling and now you have turtles in wrestling that's right and sheamus and now sheamus sheamus is in that and everything i'm so i am i am going to be wearing my 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 ninja turtle shirt uh, jamming Ninja Rap and 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 uh, watching Ninja Turtles too, and and watching Seamus in it. Like this is the world I live in, and it's so amazing to me right now. I'm sorry, just a side, slight side geek out uh, over there. Not to there. mention, 
SummerSlam, <laughs> SummerSlam semi main event of Stephen Mel is also in that movie. <laughs> oh, he is! Wow! Mm-hmm. I f- keep mm-hmm. forgetting about that because it's Turtles. What more do I need? I mean, so there's no Kino, though, that I'm aware of. Casey but, Jones. I mean, this is the this is the Turtles movie. Sork, oh, I'm such Sork, a diversion. You could take anyone from the current WWE roster and cast them as Kino. Who would it be? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, he's got to be a Japanese guy, doesn't he? Eh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, so Kino in general... Uh, do, 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 do real quick. Mm -hmm. Only person I can think of is, uh, Sami Zayn. Shinsuke Nakamura is. Oh, damn it. That is the correct (laughs) answer. (laughs) Looking at pictures of him right now. That is Shinsuke Nakamura. You didn't say he didn't have to be Japanese though. I I said he didn't have to be, but when you have (laughs) sword, when a possible answer is Shinsuke Nakamura, the answer is Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm -hmm. It is like 42. You, you 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 fell for it, Sorg. You fell for I it. I fell for it. I know. Well, hey, uh, some great points in the chat room. Uh, Garza, wow, Garza and we, uh, Garza and Eamon are going at it in the chat room right oh, now. They're we, having their own separate podcast. They are having their own podcast. Let's let's listen or, in on their we, podcast. Like yeah. for 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 editing purposes, can we like just post a picture of everything going on in the hang in in the in the chat room? Um, like just put it in the bottom left hand corner. <laughs> I tried to do that for a while, and it didn't work out too well, where people weren't chatting. But this also, I don't think I could give enough space on screen for what's happening. Um, they're having an argument about about wow, you know, Miz, so Miz as we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Amon's saying because they're they're you know they were talking about heat, you know, and that's what Miz is there for. Uh, Amon's saying, but the rest of his goal is to get people emotionally invested if it was just the three there would just be great wrestling but the addition of Miz and the intelligent use of him in the match brings heat uh garza says you can get heat in the tent in, in the sense that sammy and cesaro have never been champs and are fighting to fulfill their dream or whatnot it doesn't always have to be heel versus face I, also owens is in there too there's plenty of heat with amons as well or, uh, a- owens amons owens <laughs> I agree with oh, yeah, he, he's got heat with all of them. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I think there was a lot. I think it worked so great because there were. It was two heels, I two mean, faces, and and but everybody we kind of dig, you know. It, it was two. Like, it was two, even two and two against the two heels, two faces against each other. But you wanted, you wanted also Kevin Owens to win. Yeah, yeah. You kind and, of wanted everybody to win this one. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Miz made that sneaky. Mm-hmm. aspect to it sneaking in and winning actually makes him one of the best heels wwe has right now yeah, yeah like the fans wanted literally anyone but the miz to win that match yeah so uh, them doing it is the best way like because if owens won everyone would have cheered if cesaro won everyone would have cheered if zane won everyone would have cheered Miz wins. Everyone's like, "Oh, come on!" But those three guys are so good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like to, to, to the point where, like, like you're so burned by it, you're kind of okay that your guys didn't win this thing. And by the way, I I'm sorry. Sami Zayn is always going to be the underdog that never like. And I I, I worry. Sami Zayn is never going to win the big. I feel like oh, both. I feel like until no. he does. Yeah, he exactly. Does. Until I, he does. I feel like both. Sammy and AJ Styles in, are in the similar like almost but spots, and, yeah. and 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 that's great until you do it too long. Dolph Ziggler, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, they tried. Listen, you know, yeah, they tried. Listen, and then you, he got a concussion. You you can only be the underdog for so long until you become the Zolf, Dolph Ziggler. To hackingly paraphrase Dolph uh, Ziggler, Dark Knight, Dolph Ziggler was world champion though. Couple yeah. times. Yeah. He really was. Early. He was. Quite but early. He was, but it's not like there's you being go from world champion. To choking dog. There's being world champion. Like, can, <laughs> can we can we say okay? I, you know, I I feel like we can say Roman Reigns is yet to be proven as a champion as being a good champion. Seth Rollins, I think, has more than overproven himself as a good world champion. Right. Everybody's like, like he's there. He is. He's on the Cena Triple H level, or at least on his ascent to that. Like he mm-hmm. will get that belt again. I don't see Dolph Ziggler doing that again. Miz, unfortunately, is not in that spot. I'm, you cannot I'll, say Dolph Ziggler, can you? At least I'm not no. saying it the other way. Um, Dolph Ziggler, yeah, yeah. Same guy. Um, at least you're not uh, JBL. Bad, <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. At least I'm not doing that. 
At least I'm not doing that. So, anyways. Only wheels can do that, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I had, I had to think about that, and I was like, let, can I? Let, us yeah. not, let us not go any further, please. Yes. Exactly. Sort of continue. All right. But anyways, it, but I think that's a, that's a good discussion. So thank you guys. It, you guys can join us in the chat room, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, and you can uh, uh, partake in this conversation as well and, and, and influence the show as as these two have. Guys, let's give a shout out to our good friends. I can't pull it up because unfortunately I had a, I had a computer go down and all I can show you now is wheels in the pizza spot. Hello. Mm-hmm. Slice on Broadway. Hey, as good as pizza. Slice on Broadway.com. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Now uh, uh, now residing in the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates PNC Park. Uh, they are wow. in three locations. Uh, each view here along the tracks whenever they get done fixing them. Uh, as well as down on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. And like I said, PNC Park in their newest location. Um, once again named one of the top pizzas in Pittsburgh by some publication that I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure it's next Pittsburgh, but it, it, it was one of those. Pittsburgh um, Magazine? Was it Pittsburgh you know Magazine Sorg, this time? Sorg? Yes. They need to name Slice on Broadway the best pizza in Pittsburgh. I, I know they are. Okay. They have been, okay, they have been the best pizza. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Because I was going to say, they're really good. There it is. Go. Yeah. So That's much from so. a New Yorker, folks. That's, That's right. From a New Yorker. That's right. And a fat New Yorker. I know people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is true. Never so trust. Say it. There's two I things. There's that. never, tr- never, never trust a thin cook and never trust a thin New Yorker. Right there. Yes. Right there. Yes. 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 Exactly. Both of those are true. Both there you of go. those are true. <laughs> but hey, it's so- really good pizza because I live in a college town. Full of pizza places, so it's mm-hmm. better than theirs. There you go, and also I brought you like a cold slice too from up here. Yes. I mean, so much so when when I when I finally got to meet Alex Cars in person out there in California uh, uh, a week ago, uh, he's like, "You didn't bring me slice," and I'm like, "I don't think they'd let me bring it on the plane." <laughs> Can you bring just like a pizza slice in your baggage? I'm pretty sure TSA is gonna oh, flag me I'm on that. Pretty, I'm pretty sure they would. <laughs> I go. TSA is gonna I'm gonna 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 flag me on. Listen, I'm gonna eat this pizza not, right you now. You know what? Not if it's a support pizza. Can you import <laughs> pizza? pizza? You are allowed to bring that on a plane, sir. <laughs> support pizza. All right, uh, wrestling man. <laughs> show episode five twenty one. Support pizza. <laughs> Oh, is that why I saw so many dogs on the plane? You know, yeah, I want to so, know. I saw yeah, all the no, dogs coming. Service out. dogs. Service I, no, no, these these were not service dogs. Uh, they were just little fluffy dogs uh, that were following me back from they're, LA. They're Did they? Like, dogs wait, like well. maybe they thought you had pizza. Sorg. Sorg, Sorg, you're you're allowed to have a service service pig. So a service pig? Yes. yes. <laughs> There's a thing. And a service on monkey. Plane. You can have Pray a service for, monkey. Pray for Mojo. Well, sliceonbroadway.com, PJ underscore slice. Hey, we're still in the ad. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much to them for supporting this weird, weird show still um, that they listen to, <laughs> apparently. Like so. yeah, like, and they, they're still down with it. So uh, there you go. We went from pizza to New York to California to service pizza to the service pizza. dogs back to pizza in a mere three minutes. All right, and the... I have to say one more thing about Slice on Broadway. Mm. There are not many pizzas that taste as good cold as it does hot. Mm. Agree. Slice on Broadway does taste good. It cold. cools off well. It definitely yes. cools off yes. well. Certainly. <laughs> they should really do like a morning pizza where it's just cold pizza. Oh, they just serve that, it cold. Riz, that's genius. Oh, I know. That is genius. I know. I thought of it. Slice, you can it's have really that. Hard. Somebody tweet them. Somebody tweet them that idea. Riz, can you get at that? I'm on the show, Sorg. Oh, well, okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so. What? You can't do two things at once, Riz? Riz. Riz <laughs> you know how many things I'm doing right now? <laughs> I, was gonna say, Riz, you can, I don't, I don't want to know. I, w- I things, would Sorg. tweet them, but they didn't listen to my chicken nuggets on pizza idea. So. Oh, right. so we got to throw I don't have else. the pull. Just in case. Just in case. Maybe it's only locals. Pull. But. So the cleansing of WWE has continued. The elective cleansing of WWE has continued. Uh, Cody Rose has asked for and was granted his release. He's Stardust. Spoiler alert. Um, Also, Adam Rose has requested 
question mark his <laughs> release I, I believe the i believe adam rose's lawyers and the authorities have requested his release i think it's a um, no, i think wwe has requested that he request his release from wwe listen like, here yep. sign this yeah yeah, look, now we're paraphrasing other podcasts, but it is actually a really good idea. Um, how we all trust Uh But anyways, no. Uh, so so okay, let's you know again. This is this is a trend, guys, and and a lot of these guys. I think we live in a different world where it's not like oh, I got to hold on to my job in WWE. I think I think I would love to have a conversation with a Ryback or a Cody Rhodes, um, but probably not an Adam Rose. Uh, you know, you know. Guys like Colt Cabana, guys like, I guess, Drew Galloway, uh, you know, that have left and, and seen a, 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 a life outside of T, uh, uh, WWE. WWE. You know, John Morrison. John Morrison is, is, is flourishing. Holy crap. Um, um, Rey Mysterio is, is everywhere in California. Like, you know, uh, you know, Ethan they're, Carter the third. Ethan Carter the third is doing amazing things all over the place uh, and, and, and making a mark or, or even seeing a Luke Gallows leave and come back as we've discussed on the show, that effect as well. Um, you know, these are, I think every one of those guys that we've seen, except for Adam Rose, are people that we say, well, you're not doing anything with them. <laughs> like Sandow will do fine. If he's a smart enough of a business wrestling fan, right? Our mm-hmm. business wrestling business person. No, he has to be a fan as well. Yeah, everybody's I mean, got to be a fan. He, you know. he is. He knows what to do in the business to make people like him because mm-hmm. he he is acting like a fan, going, "This is what I'm doing. And this is what I like to see in the ring." Right, right. I mean, the the, the difference is is of course Adam Rose. He um, has some issues. Apparently, mm-hmm. um, has some uh, apparently domestic issues uh, that uh, and and remember, hey, we, I discussed several weeks ago, like you know when like everything seems to be going great for a guy in this gimmick, and you're like, why did they just kind of stop doing something with him, right? Um, and he's like, maybe something's not working out backstage. I think the writing was on the wall for Adam Rose. Um, I. I the the things that you're hearing, which apparently was it was some kind of something about an argument with his wife, and he got cited because he took the phone out of her hand. Uh, they call that something specific. I can't remember, but she was calling nine one one over him, right? Um, and and that the more and more we hear, this seems like a really crappy situation. Um, yeah, it's not the first time it happened either. No, no, it's like you don't you're not that guy overnight. Like they, and I think I think there's. Like when you see somebody getting kind of dropped off, like they've rubbed somebody the wrong way, justifiably or not, and I feel like that's what we've seen with Adam Rose in his like slow descent, right? And um, slow. It's it's even worse because especially if Adam Rose, when they did the uh, ESPN special on NXT, like we all felt for Ray LePon, the guy behind Adam Rose. Like, oh yeah. We oh, saw yeah. his like family life, um, his stuff with his kids. Like, this just kills me. It kills it, me. And it, saying this was a slow burn is not giving justice. What do you mean? Because uh, a month ago, okay, a month before this happened, this man was suspended or oh, was going was. to be suspended for for a wellness violation. And he made a comment about it too. Was it the, the second one, right? Yeah. This was his, was it, it was his second violation of the wellness policy. And he he decided to go on Twitter and post a note from a doctor. And then he, everybody was back on his side. And then not 30 days later he's doing this he's doing whatever the hell he was doing with his with his right. wife or girlfriend or whatever and he's back down even further he's digging an even a bigger hole than he did when he was suspended it, well in, a, in the slow burn part i'm talking about is the from adam rose the party guy to the party pooper to now social outcast like that professional oh, and that. creative like like that like i think that is a response to um the background Mistakes. of business. I yeah, I feel like I feel like that's the people dealing with them are like, let's kind of shit on this guy, you know. Like I feel mm-hmm. like that's what's happening there. 
that's a perception thing. That's a presumption on my part. But but I think that's what's happening. Um, like uh, that's why I feel like the trends are uh, with, with with those kinds of things and and how we think we understand how WWE works in business and everything. Um, but going to the other guys because there's a good comment actually in the chat room here. As have been all the good stuff's coming from Texas. We should have had yeah. them on the show. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks, Sorg. I'm not saying who I'd replace, <laughs> but I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, there's the, two of them from Texas, Sorg. So I know, and they're, and they're the ones arguing. I think it's an East versus West thing. But uh, anyways, um, uh, Amos saying, I think it's super commendable, commendable and evident. What? <laughs> no. What? No. No. No, with, no reels. No. <laughs> Did uh, you just combine Riz and Wheels yes, together? Yes, I'm <laughs> still real, I'm still coming reels? down yes. off of this headache yeah. medicine. Um, On the reels, though. I think it's super commendable and evident that Cody is passionate about wrestling. He could sit with his contract and wrestle on superstars for three years and make his money. And instead, he wants to be creative and enjoy his work. <laughs> we aren't arguing. <laughs> no, you guys were having a lively debate. I, and that, that's that's cool. But anyways, <laughs> read it how you will. But but no, I think that's <laughs> it. I think between that, Ryback, obviously, for frustrated with where he was right and saying you know what i don't need to be here i can do something else right and again going back to that idea there is life outside of wwe if nothing else at least you were there and you see how the business is from the top down and realizing there might be a valley that's greener over here i i don't i don't think we can categorize ryback and cody in the same thing yeah i don't i don't think we can okay because no. Ryback was given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. How about Barrett? Yes. Barrett, we can. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, um, and that's that's the trend line that I'm following for this. Yeah. And like, I, I, I wouldn't and I be think, surprised if, if Dolph ends up on this list. Oh, yeah. I, 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 at part, some point. part of me because is like, like, I think Dolph just likes hanging out and, and dying for everybody at this point. Like, maybe that's like, I, maybe he's like, as long as I look like I'm, I'm, I'm a dead mess, I will have a job and I'm cool with that. And that's cool. That <laughs> might be good for him. You know what I mean? I mean, there's plenty of other perks being a WWE, I'm sure. Uh, so, so sure, you know. But, Sword, do you know what this reminds me of? Hmm. Um, when John Cena was on his rise and he was wrestling guys like Kali and Umaga and stuff like that, and the guys who were in the mid card who were playing on amazing stuff like Carlito, Shelton Benjamin, um, Kennedy to an extent. Kennedy. Uh, and oh, there's another person I'm thinking of too, and I can't place it. But oh, Morrison. Morrison. Yeah. Morrison. Yeah. yeah. When those guys were having amazing mid card matches and were getting over. But they weren't being, they they weren't given a chance, mm -hmm. and this is kind of how WWE has always worked, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Like it really is, and it's just they are. I think I think it's because they're a publicly traded company. Really? Yes. How, how do you I, think? I, I, you can't take as many risks if you're worried about shareholders. Until mm. until everybody's injured yeah, out and you Chris have Masters. to. Chris Masters, Garza just brought up Chris Masters too. Right. Absolutely, Chris. No, Masters. nobody, nobody breaks the master lock. No, I, I, Chris Masters was awesome. Nobody, except for Marines. Nobody, Marines break the master <laughs> lock. You son of a bitch. Nobody breaks that master lock. I broke it, <sighs> except for Wheels. Right. Um, no, I think you're right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Eamon also says uh, uh, Cody Barrett and Sandow's releases are very indicative of the system that WWE has created. Their talent is obvious, and the fact that they are uh, able to be released is truly sad uh, for how the WWE machine works. But also, the WWE, I think also it needs to be considered that WWE is having no shortage of talent these days in general. So it's not just having talent to rise to the top. It's also, I mean, it is politics in the back and this and the other thing and connecting in certain ways and t-shirt sales and like it, it's it's not just good enough to be a good wrestler or be good on the mic and have all this stuff cesaro you know uh, cesaro i think it's on his way up and hopefully this works this time but there's a lot of intangibles including you know everything it, it, it's it's all the machine and what you do and everything um and, and I, I think i agree with you with the risks um listen to the shane shane mcmahon podcast last night and what did they do when they were in a bind they called shane mcmahon <laughs> you know what i mean um because they needed proven people you know uh because they weren't going to 
display the hopes and dreams of 100,000 people at AT AT&T Stadium on Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, which they could have. They could have, but... Mm -hmm. Well, but see, the thing is, WrestleMania at this point, I don't think needs a big name because that place more or less sells out sells out like before any match is even announced right because I mean, for they being wrestlemania it, they, they did it with Sami Zayn and nakamura on nxt yeah Same exactly arena. or a different different oh. arena but it was, it was a big arena and they could have done that in a, a at&t stadium and done the same thing mm-hmm. i think but i mean it, it i think it's because they're publicly traded like if that's why the attitude era they took so many risks they didn't have to account for anyone they were just they're like you notice when when we talk about like the downfall of wwe and like when it started to get kind of boring and everything that was right around the time that they became a public company yeah yeah like i think there was a reason for years and years they weren't one but they wanted to try and make more of a profit. And that's that's fine. It's a great business model. There's nothing wrong with that. Everybody likes money. Yeah, but it can hurt your in-ring product because why do you think John Cena is being pushed back? He's probably not ready yet. Randy Orton's probably not really ready yet. Hell, Seth Rollins probably isn't really ready yet. But you need these guys who have been on marquees and you need these guys who are big money makers. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and and Stardust or Cody Rhodes or Dash and Cody Rhodes or whatever m- moniker he, he was, he wasn't going to be up there. And I think that's where – that's where – or why he – now he decided to go because he knows that it, even though his WWE career might be done, he can go over to – RO uh, I mean ROH. He can go to uh, a TV show like – like Arrow and, and the Flash <laughs> or something like that and be a star. Oh, wouldn't go, that be amazing if 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 he's actually gonna show up the next season of Arrow? Holy crap. Sorg, oh. Sorg, I, I said this. Kevin Smith wants to write the villain on a monopia. That's Cody Rhodes right there. Yeah. Holy I mean crap. he he can he can yeah. also go to Shikara and be a top guy there in any form that he wants. He can he can try ROH, he can try TNA, he can try anything else, mm-hmm. and and be big. It just didn't work out for him in WWE. That's a good point. That's a good point from the chat room. Wheels is saying, "I'm jeez, I'm so sorry." Garza is saying, <laughs> "Um." Exactly. TNA is not publicly traded, and the in ring is awesome. He says, and again, hey, 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 hold on, hold no, 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 no. But the creative sucks. First of you're all, saying. WWE in ring is better than TNA right now. Okay, okay, I, this is I, opinion. I'm categorically we'll saying okay. that TNA is shit, and and that's not because he worked for WWE either. No, I don't work for WWE anymore. But um, WWE has better in ring talent at this point. Yes. I'm not saying the talent in TNA is bad. It isn't. CDJZ. But, but they're all wrestling the same match over and over again. Yeah. Not really taking any chances at all. Mm-hmm. And it's because they have to film four tapings in one session. Right. Like, that's the reason for that. Like, Raw, you point to me in the past six months in TNA, any match that was as good as that four way on Sunday. Yeah, can't find it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I and, guarantee and, and, that. And I think it's not just you dropping a match, as we were talking about with that before. Like it's also the build who's involved. You know, it they, there's a lot of story there going into it, and 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 they delivered. And I think it's a, it's a full it's a full package there. Um. Well, okay. So so Cody Adam Rose. I, the one, do we really expect Adam Rose to pop up anywhere? That, uh, jail. Jail. Oh jail. yeah. Okay. Bike <laughs> TV's jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, next season of Oz. Okay. All right. Uh, Cody, what do you, well, you, you, Mike, you said, yo, Chikara is this, that, the other thing, you know? I mean, I guess blanket, we kind of just want everybody to pop up on Lucha Underground, don't we? Yeah. I yeah at, I this point, at this point, it's kind of hard because they're already like almost on season three. So, so I don't, we'll I don't see, see them in two years in season four at this point. So, I, I don't see Cody Rhodes going to Lucha Underground for some reason. Really? 
No? I don't. No. Ah. I, 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 I think he's... The acting is kind of different for Cody Rhodes. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, I think he'd be better in acting, and he he's one of those next ones that would go and do probably more to the TV, big screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, 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 like we said, Arrow and all that stuff. Um, but right. also... I, I see him in Chakara. I, 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 I Sorg, I want to see him in King of Trios with Damien Sandow. Oh, jeez. The, Ro- the Road Scholars and Darkness Crabtree. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if it was the trios and it was Road Scholars and Stardust? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they just like figure out yeah, a way to see, do it. But you can't, you can't do Stardust because I'm pretty sure that's trademark. Cody Rhodes is not. I, Gold Dust has been used on the Indies. And his own T-shirt stuff, but I, I I don't know if that's just because it was the '90s and they didn't do stuff the same way. Yeah, I think I think Goldust owns his gimmick. Maybe, 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 maybe because it's a spin on Goldust, they let him have it too, and because he's a Rhodes well, family member. Well, no, if it if it's gonna be a trios team, it should be the Rhodes Scholars and Dean Douglas. <gasps> oh. oh. I don't think Dean would agree to but, that. No, yeah, he yeah. would never do he that in a million years. That. Shane Shane Douglas does not have a sense of humor. I'm sorry. <laughs> he doesn't. I know he doesn't, but how amazing would that be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be so great. Anyways, guys, uh, it's such a great conversation. Uh, but uh, if you guys want to support some alternative wrestling that maybe some of these guys will pull... Pop up in. We've had Gold Dust at AWC's Night of the Superstars. Uh, I would love to see him, see see Cody Stardust, whatever we're gonna call him, uh, Moon Dust. Ooh, we could just be Moon Dust. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, pop up in, in one of these as well. I'm sorry, a Lady Beard video just popped up on my Facebook feed and confused the crap <laughs> out of me. He's been pop, he's been popping up a lot lately again. Um, Sorg, what kind of videos are you watching? We, over there? You were part of the Lady Beard conversation on the Facebook. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, that's all. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about it on Indie Mayhem. But, anyways, no. uh, if you want to find out some more stuff, go to IndieWrestling.us. There's some new stuff on there. Uh, IWC's Reloaded 2.0 with badass Billy Gunn against front of the show Dylan Bostic, as well as a fantastic <laughs> knockdown, drag out, holy crap. Hardcore match between you want to see Extreme Rolls. They really they had they had the thumbtacks before uh, they did at Extreme Rolls this past weekend, which also was a nice surprise too. Uh, but the bandages the next day was a little weird. But other than that, sorry, Jericho. <laughs> well, actually, the the uh, I I loved how we all kind of made fun of the bucket. <laughs> as far as the weapons and it's like that's what turned out to be the most hardcore thing we didn't even talk about that did we uh but anyways yeah. related 2.0 uh jimmy demarco shima zion D- i'm sorry dj z bah, 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 bah. There, there it is go. leaving in your spot uh in a, a knockdown drag out for the heavyweight title uh in iwc iwc's reloaded 2.0 prime wrestling a lot of great classic stuff including uh, legends of superstars including kevin nash luke harper greg valentine uh bruce beefcake all and Jim neidhart uh bunch of great names in there uh, uh, from over the years that were part of uh, Prime Wrestling, all at ndwrestling.us. Sign up, you get a free show uh, uh, to it's the newsletter. It's still called Arms, Sorg? It's still called Arms. I just changed that soon. Uh, but you know, I'm, uh, I'm on that DVD, Sorg. You're on that DVD, yes. I think I'm in the crowd for that, too, because I don't think I worked that night. But anyways, uh, go check <laughs> that out. Uh, so uh, we'll be right back. We're gonna see. I think Riz popped up this week. If now we're gonna have to find the video. Riz is our 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 look back at the ten years of Wrestling Mayhem show at our friends looking for group over in Pittsburgh, Brookline, and neighborhood. We're actually gonna be going back there. If you guys also like the Awesome Cast here in Pittsburgh area, we're gonna be celebrating six years of Awesome Cast over there uh, with a live special show. And you can we'll hang out and uh, you guys can uh, uh, check out the the virtual reality rigs they have over there. Go check out the Awesome cast facebook page for the event and information for that but let's go to see what riz has to say and we'll be right back with a big question i had a lot actually um before before mayhem i was this shy college student like staying in my home and all that st- staying in my uh, my dorm all that stuff but I now have the confidence to talk, to talk to people, talk to on the internet, talk to my Let's Play channel. Just talking to people is actually a lot better now than it has been. 
So I, I do thank them for that. Uh, and the people behind me as well, the lunchboxes, the dutters, the missies, the, even the gens over there, and the Carlinses. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a fun time to be here, I mean, be, be, be around for the Mayhem Show. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, twisted Brady Bunch is back. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> at Sorgatron on the Twitter, Riz at Riz Plays Games, Mad Mike 4883, and Hot Wheels RWA. Go check out rwalive.com with everything going on. And you guys are actually representing at the Global Force Wrestling Show in McKeesport, PA, south of Pittsburgh. So if anybody's yes. in the Pittsburgh area, please go check that out. And, and not that I don't think you you aren't actually a part of that, like helping or anything, but but RWA no, is... But I will be there. You will be there. Uh, I, I plan to be there as well. RWA is representing. We get a night off. We get to actually sit back and watch these guys and not work. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to... I don't know how I'm going to handle that, Sorg. Oh, I can I tell you how I handle it because I went to an inst- in- interesting wrestling show uh, in northern L.A. Uh, last yeah, week. I, I, I saw that, that video. We and, um, will be talking like, about on wow. Indie Mayhem Show, so please stay tuned for that if you're here on the live feed on, on YouTube or over on Facebook Live. All right, the big question of this week, obviously with all the releases going on, uh, requested or otherwise, of who of the people who are left in the WWE, I'll include NXT just in case, but the WWE contracts, let's say, who would you like to see request their release in the context that they're going to go to greener pastures somewhere else? Got one. Pick me, pick me, pick me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Riz? <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for your button. Riz? Luke Harper. Luke Harper? Aww. Aww. Yes. Luke Harper mm. has done nothing in, in WWE. I don't think that's true. He, he hasn't done much. He's also been injured for like four months. Exactly. But he hasn't he hasn't do you, do you know did you do you know what a good match that he was in since he was in WWE? Um, I thought he had some great matches Shield. as IC champion. Yeah, okay. with Ziggler and Dean. And... Yeah, he had a good run of matches there. But Luke Harper, not in. Uh, I I still think he he was kind of misused in, the, in WWE for some reason. Like okay. just for me, just for me, like he he was. I think he was good on his own like he didn't need the wyatt family i think no no but he, but, he but, doesn't need but the either. wyatt family but i think the wyatt family needed him yeah mm-hmm. but but they're not really they don't really use him as much mm-hmm. it's usually oh let's put him up against the usos yeah oh let's put him up against uh uh these uh, these other guys and make them lose and make make, okay. make them even worse okay um I just feel like Brody Lee would would be bananas in ROH right now. He would be he would be one of the top monster guys in TNA. He'd be the top monster guy in Shikara where he was from, where he where he came from. I just, I just think he would be a lot more useful somewhere else okay. than he is right now. Okay. Okay. All right. I have one. Uh, Oh, do you have one, Wheels? Yeah, I do. But if you want to, go for it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say Alicia Fox. Mm. Ooh, yes. Alicia Fox. Um, Mm. criminally underused in Divas Division. She uh, she's been there for God almost ten years, and she's really she when they give her something to do like when she was doing the crazy fox gimmick it was mm-hmm. great i mean mm-hmm. she jbl she stone cold herself wearing jbl's hat which was awesome um i would love to see her in maybe like a shimmer or something like that or like the women of honor i'd love to see that or definitely lucha underground i think she i think she could do really well in lucha 
because especially you got Ivelisse, you got Taya, you got. I think she could do really well. Over so there. basically, anywhere that values women's wrestling a little, not, not that WWE doesn't, but WWE isn't going to value last generation's divas. You know? What yeah, I mean? yeah. WWE like WWE basically they they're lumping Alicia Fox in with the Bellas, and that's not fair because Alicia Fox was probably better than I would say both Bellas. Right. Like throughout their career. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but that that's that's fine. All right. What about you, Wheels? Well, um, I'm going kind of like where Riz went. I'm saying Bray Wyatt. Let him loose fully to what he really wants to do instead of the hands tied behind his back of only with a little bit of what he can do. I think he could be a lot more dangerous in like a Lucha Underground of a even crazier Bray Wyatt, and but that's just taking the character, though. Yeah, but he said that that is him in interviews. He's like Bray well, Wyatt is what I I am. Yeah, I mean you can you can do the same gimmick but with a different name. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Let yeah. him lose, like I said in Lucha Underground or even Chikara, like you guys even said, or anywhere on the Indies. Just let him lose, and we would see a totally different. Uh, Rotunda or Wyatt, whatever you want to call him. Let him fly, man. Let him fly. He, he could be a he could be a really cool big bad in Lucha Underground. Like a guy who's pulling strings behind mm-hmm. him and has to deal with Aztec gods and he can like call on swamp monsters and shit like that. That would be awesome. Oh, Garza got a good one. Uh Garza in the chat room says uh Del Rio. Uh he he, he was good when he left. He was a god when he left. He was oh he was god when he left. A god when he left. Uh, a hero in Mexico, champion of the of the people in Lucha Underground, and he could be amazing in New Japan. Del Rio is his guy. Okay, okay. So, um, I, the only reason I say I don't want Del Rio to do that is because he chose to go back. Yeah, he knew what he was getting into. Yeah, he was getting in a lot of money, Scrooge McDuck money. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes no, a seriously. dive into he He's takes a dive into a vat gold. of pesos every day. He could buy an asset gold medallion. <laughs> sword sword <laughs> guy. Um, hold on, I'm on I'm still on the buying a medallion thing. Um but anyways, uh no, I <laughs> so so I was thinking about stuff and 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 part of me wants to say Kurt Axel. But Kurt, no, Kurt Axel. Curtis, Axel. Curtis Axel, yeah, uh, whatever his name is, Miguel Cuddy, whatever. Um, but I think I'm the Genesis. It seems so obvious. <laughs> it seems so obvious. But yeah, Dolph Ziggler. Like, like, yeah. Please, please. I, I started please, thinking just... about who wouldn't survive without WWE. <laughs> See, the thing though, I think if Ziggler requested his release. He would not go back to wrestling. Yeah, really? he, I'm with you on that one. I don't think he would. I think he would he's try working, to be an actor or yeah, a comic account. He's working on those side gigs right now. So, I mean, as he's even Morrison, Morrison isn't just doing wrestling, right? Like, Morrison's doing, like, he's been, you know, he, he was talking in interviews, like, I've been doing acting, acting lessons. I've been, you know, doing all this other stuff. He's been doing the parkour thing. You know, he's, again, you know, hitting a lot of different things. Ziggler is out there doing stand up. Um, he could completely spin that into a career or or the acting, having done now a movie, right? Um I'm so debatable on I'm, how well that movie I'm, went. I'm gonna say that maybe Ziggler shouldn't quit his day job. Hey, you know what? Have you seen that movie with Batista and Rob Van Dam? No. no. Mm. Don't. <laughs> what, what, oh, I, I it looks you, like the Ben score. But have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Right. Everybody starts somewhere. Just because it was a bad movie doesn't mean like that should. I mean, again, it's also like probably his first acting. Uh, uh, now, Rob Rob Van Dam. No, he shouldn't be in the acting. Unless By the way, so you, you say we shouldn't do something. You know exactly what we're gonna do. What? Also, I'm pretty sure Rob Van Dam has been in more movies than Batista and Dolph Ziggler combined. Really? Yeah. Stunt double. Um, no, no, not even stunt double. He did a lot of shit movies when he was in TNA. 
<laughs> oh. No, he did. That that's a real thing. That's a real thing. I'm gonna bring him up on IMDb. IMDb. Yeah, I'm bringing oh, up Batista's. Oh, oh, I'm bringing up Batista's to bring this one up too. Uh, I it did is called about Wrong Side of Town. Wrong oh. Side of Town. Yeah, that that's it. That's it. With oh. is that is, is that's the one with uh, Rob Van Dam, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. He he. <laughs> um, it's apparently you know going what? to be in Sniper Special Ops coming out this year. But he was in mm. Sacrifice, a TV movie. Lockdown, a TV movie. Against All Odds, a TV movie. Oh, wait. No, those are just TNA pay-per-views. <laughs> Why are they calling them movies? Oh, no, that's what they do on IMDb. That, yeah, that, okay. That's completely what they do on IMDb. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Wrong Side of Town. I was like, wait, wait, wait. Why he was, is like naming it off TNA? But he, was in, uh, he was in Black Mass 2. He was in... Uh, he was in a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, right and now, now showing and now he's an awesome pawn villain. So, you know, and he was in super fights. I mean, don't take don't take the Dolph Ziggler like really bad movie he did for WWE films as a I'll as a you know papers. you know look at Randy Orton in I'll take it to the papers right. Uh, um, um, and Randy and, Orton has would not be a good actor. In other movies, but well, you know, actually, twelve rounds was not half bad. I mean, it wasn't a great movie, but I don't think he, I thought he did well in it, right? Okay, okay. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> he's not. Listen, let's can we can we can we face one fact here? All of these guys mm. do better in their respective movies than Hulk Hogan. Oh, uh, sure, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll as an actor, yeah. as an actor that can actually do things. Not everybody's The Rock. But at least they're doing better than Hulk Hogan. Although that one well, movie Hogan did got him a lot of money. Yeah. What? Which one? Yeah, that one. Oh, movie. That, sure. that one movie. Oh. That only oh. is on Pornhub right now. <laughs> oh God, it is. Not. That was a multi-million dollar. It movie. probably is. Wait, it, uh, uh, I'm not looking. Really? Did we have to mention Pornhub on both the main shows tonight? Uh, yes, more, we more did. Po- <laughs> there is more for more Pornhub. You can go to awesomecast.net and listen to, to episode 300 that we just recorded this evening. All right, enough about that. That's enough about that. <laughs> ah, jeez. Can I tell you guys about? Can I can I show you guys a slideshow of my trip? Sure. Oh, this is the part where grandma pulls out the projector. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> except it's my iPhone. Um, and, no. This is going to be great for the audio list. Yes, sir. I want to tell you about, of course, as I mentioned, I saw, I found indie wrestling while I was out there. I've been in California. I was in San Diego when we did the show last week. And, 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 and Bobby attests to this as well as we'll uh, find out in, in, in uh, what we learned. Um, wrestling is everywhere, man. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty freaking cool. Uh, first of all, uh, wait, I do want to share, uh, I, I, I just shared it over on the Facebook as well. And I, I think I, I tweeted it out, but, um, so I was recording, I was filming for an event, um, this collegiate Baja event, um, in California, they make Baja cars and, and, and do the engineering and everything. And I'm walking by and what do I see? And if you guys are on video, but just walking by and look over and I'm like, huh. There's a luchador in a Baja car just hanging at their tent. Okay. <laughs> and, and he gave me a thumbs up as I gave him a picture. Yes, this is one of the Mexican teams. We There was like like probably eight teams from Mexico in this one. There's also teams from like Dubai and uh, and, and South Korea and, and uh, China as well. Uh, so th- it was pretty international. Uh, the picture kinda just cool. popped up too. It, What's that? You just got it on the feed? Yeah. 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 Awesome. He's so happy. He is so happy. He's, he's a so luchador. happy he's, he's in a tiny car. He's got a rest. He's a Mexican dude in a wrestling mask in a Baja car. That guy is living the life right there. Okay. He, Sorry, so. are you sure that's just not spoilers from Lucha Underground season three? <laughs> there, were, there were no spoilers. On and we just broke our NDA. Okay. Ah. Um, <laughs> Um, but anyway, so Bill shot 2.0, but that was okay. So that was, that was the last thing that I just stumbled on. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm visiting our good friend, Veronica, right. Um, um, V rock, uh, you may know from old ladies of mayhem shows. Sorry. I'm trying to bring up my, my, my images here. Um, but 
so we're walking. We went out, grabbed the bite somewhere, and I, we're walking by. And what do I see across the street? And I hear announcing of taco orders. And it's mm. a place called Lucha Libre Taco Shop. I want to say this was yes. on TV somewhere. Yes, too. this was apparently on uh, Food Food Kinda Network. Dives? Yeah, I believe so. It's, yes. it's been in that's a lot of I, stuff. That's what I thought it was. Then I find out this is the second location. Okay, so my last day, I, I decided to take a take a lift over. I found the other location online, and uh, I went to the original Lucha Libre taco stand, which is apparently not uploaded to my Google <laughs> Photos, unfortunately. So I'll have to look for those. Uh, um, sorry, it, it was not on man. It was on uh, man versus food. Not it, really? Drivings and dives. What did he eat? Um, <laughs> it's probably a burrito wrapped in a luchador mask. So oh, I'm getting hungry see. thinking about that. That was such a good burrito. Oh, but anyways, so I'm looking into this thing, and 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 it's got all this lucha stuff. There's a great like booth. You can apparently reserve the booth, and it's the champions booth, right? It's like gold, and there's a ring rope and everything to it, and everything. There, I've seen that. Before. You've seen this? Okay. That, yes. Now that, now that you're mentioning that part of it, I have seen that place before. But it, it, and our, our friend Scott from the Scare House has been there before. He says um, it's it was fantastic. All kinds of lucha stuff on the walls, even some Rey Mysterio uh, autograph stuff. Um, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, you go to those, those places, um, where like, oh, here's all the celebrities that have been here. It's the same thing, except all the celebrities have masks. <laughs> so, um, also I found, I found why they were at man versus food or man versus food was there. They have the surf in California burrito. That's what I had. Steak, oh. shrimp and French fried filled concoction. That puts the SmackDown on standard Takiera fare. Okay. It was amazing. I had the surf in California. It was it was really really that good. sounds it had delicious. Shrimp and French fries and oh, oh. Like, I, I want to marry that sort of. Oh, but uh, I got a T-shirt. They gave me stickers. It was it was great. They're, they're, playing, they're playing. They're playing. They're playing like that. Mexican lucha films on on the TV. There's actually like the old style microphone. Like when they call your order your name for your order. It's that microphone that pulls down like, like the Fink used to in Madison Kennedy. Square Garden. Yeah, this is the Kennedy mic. It's completely the Kennedy mic. Hey, so hey, great. It's the Madison Square Garden mic. Let's show uh, some the, respect. Like, yeah, well, it would, but the Madison Square Garden had the big MSG sign on it, right? Sorg, I mean, Sorg, let's show some respect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Plus, sure. I also don't want to mention Kennedy anymore. That's already <laughs> two oh. Our Kennedy quota. Has been met. Um, do, you, do you want us to mention Anderson at all? No. Because that's even worse. Anderson. God Jeez. damn it. All so right. there's three references now. So so not to be like, hey, I had a cool trip. Uh, but, man, I had a cool trip. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, go check it out. It was, oh, I found my pictures too. Uh, so here, if you guys are on, on, on the image, and these are in the Facebook as well. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it was it was some pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, Sorg, I enjoyed... The kids with the flashlights following the action. Oh, that's that's for uh, Indie Mayhem show uh, later, actually. Yes, and but, apparently, uh, but I just wanted to say I enjoyed that. Yes, <laughs> as the train goes by. Uh, but no, go check it out if you're in San Diego. Lucha Libre Tacos. Uh, you can check out Freight the website train. and get t-shirts. There's a train coming. Freight train's coming through. A lime Freight of beans. train is coming uh, through. Y'all. Website, tacosmackdown.com, by the way. Uh, all right, uh, and, and uh, so so I have to mention because I was going through Facebook and and I realized you know okay all the cool stuff happened um, uh, while I was gone in Pittsburgh apparently um, first of all you guys had interesting fog and uh, also yeah. uh, you know just a picture of where is it here just a picture of uh, uh, of uh, uh, one Shawn Michaels eating a permani sandwich is that with Kiesel? Brett Kiesel there yes, in that, that picture image. Like, yeah, he, he just likes people who rhyme with diesel. We are a Pittsburgh based podcast, of course. Yes, uh and yes. so this by is the way, uh three zip. Three zip. Three zip, by the way. Uh is the, the it's Sean Michaels. So weird if they lose this one. So too. shut up. Uh, one, our friend Dutters, who Shut works up, at Riz. our friend Dutters, who works at the arena, uh, uh, uh sends me a picture of 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 HBK like hanging out, you know, through the through the 
uh, uh, through the curtain, and and our friends Mikey and Big Bob are on Snapchat going absolutely insane because they got crazy uh, seats by the penalty box on the ice, and there's uh, Shawn Michaels three rows back. Um, <laughs> apparently, okay, Pens fans, um, please explain why the hell Shawn Michaels was at a Pens game <laughs> this well, past he, week. He will not be allowed at Game 7. He will not be allowed at Game 7. <laughs> If John Michaels is bad, like, how, how did this happen? Uh, Riz, you want to take it or you want me you to can take, take this? Okay. Um, basically, in hockey, there are these things called lines where it's the line of the offensive. People. In case you're in I'll Texas and don't understand don't hockey. Know hockey. Yeah. The, Even like Sean third... Michaels. Actually, Sean Michaels, I read uh, an interview with Sean Michaels, and he's like, I'm from Texas. Hockey? But yeah, thank he, you, Pittsburgh? he didn't know what hockey was. No, no. He didn't know what hockey was. It's like if we tried to explain it. I'm basically explaining this for Eamon. Um, in person. <laughs> yes. But, uh, and Sean Michaels. The third, the third line, which is like the third set of the offensive people, uh, have been killing it in the playoffs this year. And it's Carl Hagelin, Nick Bonino, and Phil Kessel. And it turns out their initials are HBK. And I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure, was it Madden who said the HBK line? Probably, man. Um, probably. Madden, yeah. Madden, Mark Madden loves to throw in wrestling related stuff because he was the first one to do uh, to do the uh, Tyler Kennedy Kennedy yeah thing, and that took off like nothing else. Although yeah. I'm pretty sure any wrestling fan who was also a Pittsburgh fan would have made that same connection. Probably, because it's a pretty easy one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just that line and everybody, the, the build up to that line, uh, the HBK thing just grew and grew until uh, Mikey, I believe, uh, what was it, game four or game three, when they were when they were even at um, Tampa, Tampa Bay. They're, they're still in Tampa Bay now, uh, but they were at Tampa Bay and Mikey said, started the hashtag of get Triple H to get get, a, get HBK yeah. to game five. Did I say Triple H? Yes, you did. HBK to game five. <laughs> and, and yeah, and then and then the the official Penguins Twitter actually sent them an invite via Twitter. Say, hey, Shawn Michaels, you want to come out and support the H the hashtag HBK line for game and five? And then that Permani sandwich you posted, sort yeah. mm-hmm. it was. Uh, do you, do you want to know what was in that sandwich? Sort? I kind of do now. <laughs> like we're getting it, this it is was, this is why this is the late the show. Shows H, B, and K in it. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what, sort? I'm gonna give you a little guess. I'm gonna give you a guessing game. Can <laughs> you name the H, the B, and the K in the H, B, K oh, sandwich? Oh, ham, bacon, kielbasa. Holy shit! Nice. Listen, story. listen. If there's something I know, it's my fucking Permanis sandwich <laughs> menu. Okay, that is memorized front and back. I know that better than the back of my hand. What the fuck is that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what is that growing on my hand? I'm going to die. Um, but yeah. I got that reference, Sorg. Yeah. I mean, it it was weird being in Pittsburgh around that time. Yeah, because I, I, I had people actually asking me, why is Shawn Michaels talking about hockey? <laughs> <laughs> the best answer to say is, why not? I fucking no. <laughs> that, that is probably the best answer, just going, I don't know. Shawn Michaels, shut up. <laughs> this is a just hockey town. He didn't try to super kick people with ice skates on. Mm, that's Happy Gilmore. That's a different, that's a different team. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so the weird, wacky world of uh, Pittsburgh and professional wrestling is a hockey town, is a wrestling town, and now this. And I, I thought his comments were great. He was like, I always thought Pittsburgh was like a rough town, uh, I guess because of how we treated him whenever he came in or something like that. And of course, they never get to actually like enjoy the town. They're on to the next thing, right? Yes. So it yes. was kind of like, I got to enjoy Pittsburgh, and it was great, you know. And, 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 that was, and all this cool. being said, and Shawn Michaels is my favorite wrestler of all time, you're not allowed to game set. <laughs> Brett, hey, hey, Brett. Yeah. The invitation is still open. But no, no, Riz. I think you jinxed it because you said Sidney Crosby is a Bret Hart fan. You jinxed the whole damn thing. I didn't. Yeah, you put. You did a Pittsburgh screw job, Riz. No, wait, 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 Sid- wait, 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 wait. Half the people, or seventy-five percent of the people in hockey, are Canadian. I think a lot of them are going to have Bret Hart fans. Sorg? 
Don't bring <laughs> logic into this for once. <laughs> we're bringing logic into Sean, this. you can watch it at home. We're bringing logic no, into actually, professional Sean, wrestling. No, actually, Sean, watch it at the big screen. Watch it at the big screen with some real pits. <laughs> we're, we're, we're bringing logic into professional wrestlers. Do we, do we still do the big screen? Teams. Yes, the big screen is still there. Okay, yes. okay. There you go. He's going to be hanging outside. Just have him zip line from like one of the top of the skyscrapers. <laughs> zip line. Down. He's just going to yes. zip line from Mount Washington. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Now this has to happen. <laughs> now this has to happen. <laughs> this music's, uh, his music's playing. <laughs> he zip lines from like the top of, of console. Inter- Wait, was the screen's like in the parking lot across the street still, right? Yeah. Okay. Like you just zip lines right in. Are we from the top of the the steel tower? I don't know. I, I um Oh shit. Uh Eamon just put some breaking news in the chat room. Uh, apparently oh. apparently Cody has um, he's gonna be traveling the road with his wife. Oh, hmm. Jeez. It was released. Hmm. I'm not really surprised. surprised by this. I'm not, surprised. not really that. Not really that surprised. So I, I, I wondered think about this. There might be some like. I think there might. They might want to start a family family together, and that's why they decided to do this together. Because that's, that that's, that's why. Brie, that's why Brie left. Makes they, sense. Makes sense. Okay. And okay. That's why Nikki's still kind of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it, and then I Martina's mean, is here. Consider consider Dusty passing last year. Um, mm-hmm. I also yeah. my my first instinct was: Did something happen in the wake of Dusty passing? Was there something, you well, know, related sorry, that did was? Did you not read Cody's statement on Twitter? No, I didn't. I didn't have a chance. No. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so Cody on his personal Twitter, not on the Stardust account, he released a whole big long statement. Um, about how he wanted to come back and be Cody Rhodes, and he would talk to anyone who would listen. He would he was uh, suggesting a whole bunch of different storylines for him to bring Cody Rhodes back and everything, and they just weren't having it, and they basically had resigned to the fact that he could never be the guy. So yeah, that that had a lot to do with it. I think. <laughs> That's interesting. So they they're basically forcing him to be Stardust. Yeah. Huh. Which I mean, he had already done the gimmick with Amel, and if they weren't going to do anything with it again, there's really no reason for him to be Stardust, unless he's yeah. a team with Gold Dust, which he wasn't doing that either. So right. unless you have a Golden Truth star. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But, uh, interesting. But yeah, like. It's just really unfortunate because Cody's one of those guys that whatever they gave him, he ran with it and made it work. Yeah. Absolutely. He made, he made the mustache a, 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 a good thing to have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As a wrestler. Yeah. Like he made the mustache his thing. Uh, Every, and he looked wrote. good with the mustache. <laughs> wow. It just sucks. Um, well, we'll see as this develops. I, I hope uh, there's, I there's, hope, uh, hope they, they do well, family wise and everything. And I hope we see good stuff from that. It was, it just, it, it is a shame because well, was a Lily was no Lillian wasn't released. That's right. That was no, all no, a weird Lillian, story. They were there were rumors of Lillian being released, but she was at Extreme Rules. Right. That's right. That's right. Announcing, so. announcing this championship match, and also she was a great announcer too. So, um, anyways. So, uh, with that, guys, it's time to settle it down. Namaste yourselves and tell me what you Stay learned Stay. from wrestling Stay. this week. Who would love to go first? I'll go first, Sorg. Um, this is something I neglected to mention on the Midweek War last week, but it is something that I'm going to bring to everyone's attention now. I learned that I have a new favorite thing for wrestling crowds to do, and that is clap the terminator theme song when the machine called cage comes out <laughs> holy crap mm. holy crap it was, sorg it was amazing and to, like when i finally realized what they were doing i'm like are they clapping the goddamn terminator theme to a man who's a machine <laughs> called cage and yes yes they were i i can it's, certainly imagine them doing that mm-hmm. um it's the right group of people you know what I'm I mean? surprised you didn't hear that at redacted, redacted, redacted. Uh, <laughs> well, I could, I, I 
can't say anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, like, fair enough. I can't answer that. I don't think. Like, can I? Can I? Can I answer it in a negative? If if it's, I, I don't know. There you go. There you go. It was awesome. Uh, the band was cool. Am I allowed to say that? Sure. We, we need show. Like we're at the point we need show lawyers now. Um, Wait, the band as in. Yeah, also, the, yeah, also the band as in the TNA stable with Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, X Pac, and Eric Young. That's who he meant, Riz. Also, I kind of uh, wish they sent. Uh, 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 never mind. Oh, okay, uh, anybody else? Uh, Before I I'll get go. myself in trouble. <laughs> yeah, uh, I learned that yes, there can be a wedding at a wrestling show and nothing happened. Did did, did something happen at at the at the wedding party? Like, did someone no. did someone get a snake in a box? Nope. It was a straight shooting wedding. Yeah. No, there's no guns. Just kidding. There's no guns. No, there's probably guns there. It was no, but it was it was West Newton after all. That is true. They do pal drive mothers. They love Trump over there. What? Whoa. What? <laughs> wow. Uh okay. Uh Riz, what did you learn that is not political? I I learned that thinking that somebody doesn't know that their daughter is going to say the things that they said made me one of the weirdest people I've, I know. What? Uh, oh. you, wait, yeah. sorry. Did you see Raw last? No, just the configuration of words didn't compute in my head that you said. Uh, the, 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 the Rick, like, Okay, let me let me let me let me move back here. I learned that Ric Flair, not knowing that Charlotte was going to say that, thinking about like me thinking that that was the case, might be the weirdest thing I've ever thought about. <laughs> so in other words, Riz thought that whole segment was real. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm saying that Rick, for some reason wasn't told this was going to happen because those damn tears were real. And that, those nose, that, that, that nose glue, like, or like a uh, freaking Rudolph. You, it, it, those, that emotion from Ric Flair was something that hit him out of left field. Like mm -hmm. just hit it out of the park. I mean, that was no acting. That was real. It was, it was awkward. It was so basically Riz thought it was real. So so Charlotte, <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So while, 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 while Flair was the great promo guy, Charlotte is going to get a, uh, a, a she's going to be known as the person who can be the absolute real bitch on the mic. Yeah. Because like how ruthless those have been. I, you know, when, when she's gone into that mode, it was just like, oh, man, can we st No, no. Like, you know, it's kind of like when you watch a hardcore wrestling match and you see people bleeding all over the place and like, hey, this got a little too real, guys. I'm here for professional wrestling. Um, is the same feeling you got with Ric Flair. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh, no. And then, and then they, dra they, they dragged it out, too. Yeah. With Ric Flair slowly walking in the hallway. Like with everybody just staring at him, and then Arn Anderson coming in and just like embracing him, looking him in the eyes, and like giving him a big hug. Aww. It was one of the weirdest moments I've had without a limo exploding. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! A contest. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, um, um, well, uh, go going on that, uh, we asked people through the uh twitter mm -hmm. what they learned this week and um brendan caschioli learned that charlotte will make anyone and everyone cry mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh and Traegar learned that it's high time he sings his karaoke version of father figure to charlotte <laughs> oh and i love I, I was just flicking through randomly on my uh on my on my phone on twitter and uh, the picture for Brandon Stroud is uh, best and worst of all. Is picture of Ric Flair crying. Oh, <laughs> uh, as it should be. Yeah, yeah. There you go. 
Poor Rick. Uh, all right. I learned that uh, if you say you're going to have a street fight, it better go to the street. Um, <laughs> I will expound more on this in Indie Mayhem show, but I, I, and I have a video on the Facebook group that you guys can watch of the street fight when it went to the street. And uh, that was pretty fantastic. And it was great. I, this is the first time I, I was watching a wrestling show and somebody yelled, oh shit, cops, get inside. Um, <laughs> that's usually another kind of show. Uh, there, there you go. Um, and there were legit, like I turned around, I'm like, oh wow, there are cops across the street. And everybody went in and, and I think we had an intermission. I don't know. Everybody just kind of disappeared. And there's a luchador in the middle of the street yelling at a bus. Um, so I had fun in LA. I <laughs> now, had fun. Now, now, Thor, hmm. were they, were they saying anything to the bus or is it going to, ah, oh, just a lot. He said something. I don't know. I, I think, I think you can hear it in the video, but, um, yeah, yeah, that was a lot <laughs> of fun. Uh, but stay tuned. Indie mayhem show for the rest of that and, story. And Sorg, uh, mm-hmm. Garza in the chat room learned that Ambrose is definitely not getting invited to the nunchuck club. Mm-hmm. And that I need to watch more Kenny Omega because he does the Terminator theme too. You need to get educated. There you go. Yes. Well, no, I kn- I knew that, but I had never heard the crowd do it. That's why I told him. Uh, Bobby learned that uh, I have to find it again. That uh, wrestling is everywhere, and he sent a picture of uh, it says apparently a party peacock, as it's a picture of um, this is a a wine glass, a, a wine bottle holder. It's a peacock just just downing <laughs> a freaking wine bottle <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> um did you tag uh what did you tag mr dalton castle on that i wonder uh but i think he did that was pretty fantastic um uh, and i think that is all, oh uh the patrick bowl boyan uh from twitter also said lucha underground is the best bar none uh so there you go um all right guys i've had a blast with you it's been an awesome wrestling mayhem show sure. Thank you, the crew. Hot Wheels RWA on the Twitter down there in California, Pennsylvania. <laughs> RWA Live.com. He's a sound guy over there. And I'll go check out his friends over at Global Force Wrestling uh, next week in the uh, McKeesport area. Um, uh, Riz, that's the button I hit. Riz, Riz plays games at the E Riz on Twitter as well. Anything coming up with Riz. anything coming up with Riz plays games or anything you put up that you want to tell the people about? I did just pick up Overwatch. I'm probably I, I want to do a comparison video of uh, of Battleborn and and Overwatch. Oh, which that'd be is cool. Two two of the similar games, but uh, it looks amazing. So I picked it up and I'm going to play it soon. Awesome. And of course, the uh, 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 only one here with a future endeavor from WWE, it is Mad Mike 4883. That's me, Sorg. And uh, you can tune in this Thursday to the Mid Week War. The Lucha also, Underground approved uh, Mid Week War. Absolutely. Also, uh, be sure to follow at Mayhem Show tonight and tomorrow night. Look for the hashtag MM. I will be live tweeting Impact and Lucha Underground. That's right. That's right. Did I did I discuss? Did I say on the show how much, how many props I got from crew of Lucha Underground? About no, please, please tell me, Sork. Yes. Tell me I want, about I want the. To hear. I was. Oh, I, 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 I yo. Know, I had what I, I think it was another producer come up and say, I love the show. Love what you guys are doing. And I immediately slide that to you guys with the midweek war. Um, uh, as far as that's concerned. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, Eamon, uh, Garza, uh, 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 Mac Carlin's Rons. Carlin's, uh, you guys. And, and I, I don't know. Have I ever, uh, Riz, have you, I've, I can't remember who was all on there. Riz, all Riz used to be. I used Riz, to be. Riz, 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 everybody, he migrated. Everybody that's built that show and got those, those guys attention. I, I, I you know, uh, well, one cars and I owe you for, for the opportunity to, to go, you know, see it that we did and, and that you've got LA your... cars. I will accept my payment in the form of a free shirt. <laughs> there you go. Um, but, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, the shows are getting people's attention in some very interesting places. And, um, and I'm hoping Ron Funches might be one of those soon as well. Uh, but, uh, there's that. Uh, Wait, so what? a lot of fun. Uh, the, oh, I got to talk with Ron Funches 
in the VIP room huh. because he was just hanging out and sat down next to me. I'm like, what's up? So you come here so often? Did, did you, I literally did, did ask him you, if he comes to a lot of these shows. <laughs> did you did you ask him if he knew Grandmaster Sexay on uh, Twitter on Twitch? No, I did not. I got that message a little too late, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I forgot I forgot the reference on that and where that came from. So. <laughs> Um, but he's a swell individual. Um, but anyways, um, so what's up, Ron Funches, if you tuned in? But I don't think you would have. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you, everybody. Wow. Mayhem Nation is alive and, and around and, and amazing. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, listening to the show, uh, sharing the show, Patreoning the show, uh, uh, commenting on iTunes, um, um, being a part of the Facebook group, and hello to the new people that, that popped in on the Facebook Live as well. Um, thank you so much from the crew. From everybody from Pittsburgh, Mayhem. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.